Welcome to Spin FM. What is up, y'all? It's John the Rollins. And Skiff Musara. Two Americans living in Sweden talking about Congress. Let's go, Congress. <laughs> <laughs> no. I lied. Again. <laughs> We're not going to talk about Congress. I know you got wet. We're not talking about Congress. We're not going to talk about Herschel Walker and how his, <laughs> his his history of being a good running back somehow qualifies him to be a congressional senator. No? We're not going to talk about that? You know what? Now that you mention it, mm. we should talk about that. <laughs> no, we're I not going to talk about that. I have now voted against my childhood hero twice. Mm. Oh, you officially voted. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You so. voted in the runoff already, huh? Show sure enough, got my shit in early. Mm. Well, damn, I was. Lo- I'm looking. I'm going through our uh, our picks. Mm. I'm over here eating doo doo and flipping pick them. <laughs> <laughs> eating doo doo and flipping pick them. Um, but yeah, man, it's another week of football in the bank. Uh, sorry for those of you that are used to these episodes coming on Tuesday, but life be happening, man. Life be lifing. Life be life in my friends. And yeah. um, before we get started on the football, I kind of wanted to give a shout out to our fucking Thanksgiving party. How fun was that? Yeah, man. It feels like that was uh, like we've uh, been on since then. I know. All right. Doesn't it feel like a long time ago? But it's not. It does feel. It we was a uh, wonderful Thanksgiving dinner. What'd we have? Like 30 something people roll through? I don't know how you did it, man. Skiv hosted. Uh, I, I just got a. <laughs> <laughs> Skip hosted a whole bunch of people over there, and uh, it made me, I felt like Kevin Durant, man. You the real MVP. And I just, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the hostess with the mostest, hostess baby. Hostess with go. the mostest. Ha- uh, hosting during the World Cup, had the, the your TV ready for those that wanted to watch the World Cup, and bouncing around, eating, standing up just so you can keep all of the, I watched it, man. I, I, I'm, I'm an expert on hosting, and you did a great mm-hmm. job, man. Nice, so, I appreciate that. Yeah, man. So yeah, it was a good well, night. Man. It was a hell of a night. Everybody came through potluck style. Everybody brought a little something. Mm-hmm. Uh, we had a couple of turkeys, obviously. Uh, you you whipped out the fucking greens, which yeah, I collard greens, just baby. Absolutely, almost creamed in my pants the moment I took a bite of those. <laughs> um, there was a lot of other good stuff there. I didn't eat any of the dessert because I was too full by then. Oh, you didn't have the sweet potato pie. But I heard it was good. I think I actually have some of that sweet potato pie in my fridge right now. Mm. That got left behind. So I That's think that's something I'm you can eat cold. I like to hold a slice of sweet potato. I remember mm. cutting it and holding it and eating it as a kid. That was one thing. Mm. Like after Thanksgiving, get the cold sweet potato pie. Mm, mm, mm. How many turkey sandwiches have you had? I had one turkey sandwich because then I used the rest of the turkey to make the most kick ass pot of turkey soup you ever put in your mouth hole. Mm. Uh, I boiled up all the bones. Mm-hmm. Made a sock, Oof. Uh, and then you know threw in some you know strained it, threw in some veg, mm-hmm. threw in the leftover turkey, put the stock back in there, and let it cook for a bit. And uh, we've been eating turkey soup since Sunday. Damn, I think I'm gonna have my last bowl of turkey soup today. Actually, I think it's it's almost gone. Damn, I was I envied you as I was leaving because I I didn't. I didn't think ahead of taking a plate, and you get all, mm-hmm. you kept you could keep all the food if you wanted to, but we yeah. took the greens with us because we needed the pot, right? So I was like, I don't want to have to figure out how to get the pots back. So we ended up. I hate leaving with my own food because it feels like an asshole thing to do. Sure, but I definitely had greens. But everybody kind of did that. Yeah, I mean, everybody had their pots and stuff. So. Yeah, <laughs> but it exactly. was it was it was cool, man. Thanks for putting that together. Uh, yeah. I like that crew that we celebrate American holidays with. <clears throat> Only yeah, thing I would say is that. Uh, mm. The guys gotta uh be ready to cook, man. Yeah. Guys got you gotta be because you're the Americans in most of the cases. True. So like you gotta bring that bring that in. You can't you can't leave it to these Swedish Don't women. let this don't leave it to the Swedes. Yeah. No offense. No offense, Swedish ladies. But we uh, got this. But this is Thanksgiving and that's yeah. this what we this what we do. Yeah. <laughs> so that was fun times though, man. And then the U.S. tied with Wales, but U.S. won last night. Over, yeah, baby. Uh, Iran. Yeah, so we gotta we gotta let them know, man. We here to stay, baby. USA, baby. I watched it last night too. Yeah, uh, we watched it. 
we were, we were on it. We watched it. Uh, they, they get out of the group in second place. And I think we play the Netherlands on Saturday. So yeah, they always so, suck. No, so always it was good. nice while it lasted. I know, right? <laughs> we're <laughs> gonna get waxed by the Netherlands, probably. I like how the US is playing though. I like that aggressive style. I like the using the youth and speed Woo! and all that. So. Man, Pulisic paid the price to score that yeah. goal, didn't he? Good lord, that looked like it hurt. Yeah. My balls they are said, still hurt. They said it was an abdominal injury, but I was like, Do you nah, mean that his crunch. nuts are in his stomach? <laughs> is that what you mean? <laughs> mm. Oof. Yeah, but uh, enough about fake football. Let's talk about real football. <laughs> <laughs> real football happened. Um, we had we we've we've talked since um, since the Thursday night game sure. games. But yeah, we can we can go through, man. Thanksgiving we had three Thanksgiving Day games. Uh, that's the cool thing about Thursdays uh, on Thanksgiving weekend is that you get three games and. The three games delivered. Dude, this might be the best three slate of Thanksgiving games yeah. that I've ever seen. Yeah. For sure. Uh, and I love having Game Pass, too, because obviously I, I watched the Bills-Lions game uh, mm-hmm. in real time because it came on at, what, 630 here. Yeah. I watched the first half of the Cowboys-Giants game, and then I went to bed. And then I woke up the next morning because we had that that Thanksgiving party to prepare for. I started getting my turkey going. Once I prepped <laughs> the turkey and started working on the gravy and all that other stuff, I brought my computer into the kitchen and basically went to halftime of the Cowboys Giants game, watched that all the mm-hmm. way through, and then went on to the to the Vikings uh Patriots game and watched that the full game replay. It was perfect. Yeah, man. Uh we cool. all we almost all picked right on the uh on the Thanksgiving games. I began. I picked the uh, the Bills to beat the Lions. Uh, I right. was right about that, but uh, <laughs> you know, as as they say, barely. Because <laughs> the Lions came to play, man. They did. This was a, a very entertaining game of uh, tackle football <laughs> between two teams that I know uh, really sexy wanted to match win this game. Was my sexiest game of the week pick too. It was. It was. I don't know. I don't know how sexy it was. Because <laughs> there were, you know, it was. I mean, it was obviously kind of back and forth, and there were yeah. a few mistakes. It was like, yeah. I don't know. It was slight. Like if it would be like if two people hooked up a- at a bar, you know, and went home and had slightly messy sex. Yeah, you know, yeah. that kind of sexy. <laughs> like it was still hot, but it wasn't. There was yeah. no groove to like it. Like a you know? mediocre one night stand. It, yeah, exactly. But it, it was entertaining all the way to the end. I mean, it. It was fascinating to see how these two teams lined up against one another. I, yeah. I, I guess maybe you'd have to be just a pinch more worried about the Bills, yes. given that that's you, how you I would, left it. Yeah, you would you would expect them to to boat race a team yeah. like this. Um, yeah. <clears throat> Jamal Williams for the Lions continues to score touchdowns, which is kind of fascinating. This guy yeah. had his got his thirteenth touchdown of the year. I think he leads the league in touchdowns. I think that's more of an indictment on Jared Goff. Agreed, but they're I mean the, they're getting the resume. They're like, all right, enough of that. Let's run this thing and the type, the style of football. Sure, that, uh, Dan Campbell's yeah. gonna call. Well, he, yeah. Well, we'll get to my Falcons later, but they, <laughs> they do, they play Jamal Williams in the way that I wish the Falcons would play Corderell Patterson in the red zone. Mm. I don't know what they were. We'll get to that. And yeah. anyway, Josh Allen played a fairly decent game. He didn't have to play his best game. Mm-mm. Um, he uh, he did have a nice twenty yard touchdown that he threw to my man, former Bulldog Isaiah McKenzie. I did see that. I saw that coming. I can't believe you saw that. It was a perfect pass, though. It was really more Josh <laughs> McKenzie Allen. McKenzie scored anything. twice, right? Uh, maybe. Yeah, yeah. I thought. Yeah, yeah. But that, no, that, he had one touchdown. I thought he that scored touch- twice. He had another big play in the game where he okay, that's scored. What it was. Right. Um, but that pass was like a thing of beauty. Like it was a perfect floater right over the defender's hands. Yeah. Um You hear all the excuses they're baking up for Josh Allen? Of course. Of Tony course. Tony Romo was over there. It's like I don't know on, why man. everybody likes Tony Romo so much. Like I get oh, like, great. oh, you, no, you learn so much from Tony yeah. when you watch the game. I'm like Exactly. Yeah, but but I'm also not down with Tony Romo's agenda when I watch a game. Like okay. I'm not interested in that. Okay. Um, anyway, I don't usually pay. I'm usually rolling with uh, with my boy um, Scott Hansen in red zone. He's such a mm. dork. 
<laughs> yeah, I like Scott Anderson. <laughs> He's such as, a fucking. Dork. But as far as a play by play, I really. I, uh, what's his name? Greg Olson's good. Sure. I like yeah. him. I miss Akib Talib. I was liking him. <laughs> Me too. Um, this ga- taking advantage of turnovers is basically what this game came down to. Uh, Bills D lineman Ed Oliver, who was a beast in this game, forced a Jamal Williams fumble, which led to a Josh Allen rushing touchdown. Josh Allen threw another red zone interception, but that led to Jared Goff getting sacked in his own end zone. Ed Mm -hmm. Oliver again, making a huge play. Um, That being said, Goff didn't have a – he had a pretty good day. I mean, he was 22 for 37, 240 yards, two touchdown passes. He was carving up the Bills secondary, which is the part that I would be the most nervous about if I were the Bills. Mm -hmm. Uh, Him and Amon Ross St. Brown, I mean, this guy had 10 targets, nine receptions, 122 yards. Every time he wanted to throw it to him, the dude was there. They brought it up during the game that he, like, it's a different team when Amon Ross playing. Like, Josh Mm -hmm. Allen, I mean, Josh, uh, Jared Goff looks way better. And I agree with that sentiment, man. They were different. I was like, oh, okay. Maybe they could. I don't know. I, I was worried about uh, Dan Campbell's job, but I don't know if I, maybe a couple more drafts and they, mm. they got what they need. He does need to shake the staff up, but we'll see. <clears throat> this, I mean, the way the game ended was pretty interesting, too. You know, it's like the Bills, you know, took the lead with that long 14 play, 90 yard drive, ate up six minutes a clock. Yes. Allen was damn Methodical. near perfect on yeah. that drive. Uh, ends with a dart to Diggs. They take a 22 to or 25 to 22 lead, but Tyler Bass misses the point after. So yep. they're only up by three. Um, Goff moves their boys down the field, right? They get the game tying field goal, but then you leave Josh Allen with 23 seconds yeah. and he throws a 46 yard laser to digs yeah. that puts them in immediate field goal range. Yeah. Uh, Allen gets a few more yards on the ground. Yeah. Tyler with Bass the PI, they didn't even call the PI. <clears throat> yeah, exactly. But Diggs, yeah, it was getting tugged on. He, Tyler Bass came out and, and split the sticks for the 45-yard game winner. Mm-hmm. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, yeah I, I mean, again, good for the Bills that they won this game. And, and obviously the Lions are better than than we think they are. And they're one of those weird teams where it's like one week they're difficult to deal with, and then the next week they get, you know, they get stomped. But I don't know. We'll see. I don't know. I don't. Th- I feel like a lot of the shine is starting to rub off of the Bills. Yes, yes. And uh, these uh, in the top five quarterback conversation, Josh Allen seems to always be in there. But I'm starting to wonder if he's still a top five quarterback. Mm. He might be just outside of the top five looking in. So that'd be an interesting conversation. Yeah, you yeah, might be man. right. Because off the top of my head, I would say Patrick Mahomes. I would say. Tua, right now, the way he's playing, mm. I would say, I don't want to say Lamar Jackson, but he's such a threat too, but nah. Hurts it, is playing like a top a top quarterback. Sure. Uh, NFL uh, regulations say that I have to say Tom Brady. So right. uh, <laughs> Did you, maybe, I he's, was maybe sort of, he's in the five. Maybe he's in the five. I can't think of five. I looked away for a second. Did you say Marcus Mariota? I didn't I don't know if I heard you say that. <laughs> No. I'm trying to think. Artifact. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe Josh Mark- Allen is a top five. Maybe, but he's not playing. I don't know, man. He's such a danger on the on the ground, but he also can throw that thing when he. It's like he's leaning on the running more, and I don't like that as much. The thing about Josh Allen and the Bills, sort of writ large, top five. for me is that they are starting to fall into the category of they are who we thought they were. Hmm. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like they start out the year, but they are who be- we thought they were being thought of as Super Bowl contenders. But at the moment, do I really? Is it really possible for me to not imagine them getting popped somehow? Like in mm-hmm. the AFC playoff, like somewhere along the way in the playoff race, that somebody got to them. Mm, Burrow's no, playing I, better than them. Exactly, I can see it. I can totally see them falling on their faces again. Yeah, definitely. I, I feel bad, man. But if any. Rivalry aside, if any fan base deserves it. Agreed. Agreed. I, I can't even make myself say it, but you know what I want to say. Speaking of teams that deserve it, how about these Cowboys? <laughs> oh, Sergeant Segway. <laughs> they certainly think they deserve it. Uh, yeah. They beat the Giants, uh, the fake-ass Giants. We should call them the fake-ass Giants for now. <laughs> 
<laughs> the Cowboys won on Thanksgiving uh, against the Giants. Uh, I don't know, man. I, I feel I feel like the Giants are playing. I, I said it to somebody at Thanksgiving that the Giants are playing. They're ahead of schedule. Sure. They're playing with house money right now. Hmm. And uh, they were within a one score against the Cowboys, who are on the tail end of this surge. You know what I mean? Sure. Like this, the before they have to reboot, reorganize their roster, they're on the tail end of that this surge. So be proud. Uh, Don't hang your head, Giants fans. You're seven and four. You should not be. I think most Giants coach. fans seem to be. But they seem to have the right perspective about who they are at the moment, yeah. the, which is way more than I can say. But they the are Cowboys. who we thought they were. <laughs> no. uh, the Cowboys are like this every year. And the yeah. way this game started, I mean, it tells you everything you need to know about the Cowboys. They played with this like, I guess you, I, if you're a Cowboys fan, you would say that they came out playing with a sense of urgency and intensity. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I would I would say that they played with a level of entitlement. Like, we're supposed to be able to play like this. Uh, Is that the, bad, though? No, not necessarily. But it just so perfectly fits the way you think yeah. about the Cowboys. They're and a I Texas also, team, too. They play like a I, Texan. <laughs> but I also think it leads to a number of mistakes. This first drive would be a great mm. example of that. They come out looking like they're shot out of a cannon, mm. right? Beginning of the game. They get to a fourth and two on their own 40-yard line, and they're like, well, yeah, fuck it. We're going for this. And then they yeah. get stuffed, right? No good. Uh, yeah. And then the game kind of and then their next drive, you know, they do the same thing. They come out shot out of a cannon, and then Dak throws this terrible interception yeah. to Rodarius Williams. Um, luckily for them, the Giants couldn't do anything with it. Um, he, Dak seemed to have something going on with Michael Gallup, which looked nice. Uh, and then mm-hmm. finally, I guess on this third drive, he was he was hitting it to Gallup and to Lamb, uh, which eventually led to Zeke scoring on a um, – you know, sort of capping off this 11 play 93 yard drive. And it's like, okay, now I'm impressed Cowboys. Like just fucking settle down and play football. Okay. Uh, Yeah. Daniel Jones to Darius Slayton for that amazing 45 yard reception. Mm -hmm. Uh, That was something special that, that that's when this really became a football game. Uh, it was like, okay, these, these two motherfuckers, the, this old rivalry, they're out here swinging at each other. Uh, yeah, because I expected a like a beatdown. Yeah, yeah. But, Saquon yeah. Uh, Saquon gets him for the touchdown, but that catch by Darius uh, Slayton, they said it on the broadcast. I Uh-oh. thought this was funny. Highly contested kick, catch. Uh, this okay. This was funny. First offensive touchdown on Thanksgiving. Uh, since nineteen thirty eight. This is for the Giants, this is their first Thanksgiving touchdown since 1938 versus Damn. the Brooklyn Dodgers football team. <laughs> <laughs> How many times so, they played on Thanksgiving, though? Obviously, the Giants don't play that much on Thanksgiving. Yeah. Uh, but it just thought it was kind That's of a, a weird funny stat. thing. Yeah. I was like, the Brooklyn Dodgers football team. <laughs> uh, Jack threw another pick in this game right before the half. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, it felt like they, they should have been up more. Yeah, they were they were lucky to be to be down thirteen to seven at the half, in my opinion. Um, but then the Cowboys D basically took over the second half. Yeah. Um, Saquon only had eleven uh, carries for thirty nine yards. Uh, Micah Parsons, I believe, mm. is the way you pronounce his name. No, um, no, that's wrong. He had two. Of the Cowboys, three sacks in this game. Um, the best, man. We called it. I'm really proud of that one. We should have mm. bet on it. It was uh, – we really set up Dak for a great second half, I think, the defense. Yeah. Um, Zeke had 92 yards and a touchdown. CeeDee Lamb nearly had a like a catch of the year candidate in the yeah. back of the end zone. Yeah. That, that, that was sensational. It's a shame. It's a shame the way that works. Um his toes were in, but his heel came out. Yeah. I, I hate that. Um, really? But what, well, I it kind of – it's a little fascinating because if you reverse it, if he's facing the other direction and he drags his toes in, that's a touchdown. Yeah, but, but I if he like drags, this, But if this... he's falling backwards out of the end zone and he drags his toes, 
And is he like you know? You see what I mean? Like there's. I get what you're saying, but I also feel like it's such a disadvantage to be a defensive back. The one thing you have is the boundaries. Sure. <laughs> to play yeah. with. So if you do a good enough job to put them on the boundary, make them have to keep yeah, their yeah. heels inbounds, then you should get rewarded with an incomplete pass. It's just when you see a catch that miraculous, it's a yeah. shame that it doesn't count. Well, <laughs> stab your toes and get out. Get get on the ground. <laughs> mm-hmm. Or like plant your toes and like do a little pirouette or something. Yeah, you know I mean? man. Pirouette, man. Who's, t- who's stopping you? Yeah. Learn how to do some ballet shit, bro. Yeah. Take ballet. Stop that? being homophobic. Lynn Levy, Swan, Levy he was Bell. the one. Oh, Levy, no. Uh, Lynn Swan, the old Steelers receiver, he he credits his ability, his his acrobatic ability to sort of make those amazing catches that he made uh, because he took ballet lessons when he was a kid. Oh, wow. Hmm. I knew there was a still, another Steelers player that was, oh, you know what? I think it's Mendenhall. Remember that dude? Yeah. He didn't play much long for them, but he was, a, he did dancing. Yeah. Almost like hip hop dancing. They showed him doing all his little moves, and uh, yeah. Yeah, but he, he didn't. Like he wasn't a Lin Swan. <laughs> no. Yeah. So the uh, yeah the the Cowboys pulled that off. No surprise there. No. Uh, should we go into the third Thanksgiving game? You mean primetime Kirk Cousins? Yes. Let's go. <laughs> oh man, I sent you a a, a little uh, statistic about how unlikely of a victory that was for the Vikings based mm. upon statistics. Mm. But basically, uh, the Vikings won over the Patriots. Kirk Cousin got to shake off. He got to shake off the whole uh, Kirk Cousin can't play in prime time. Correct. Uh, and while statistics do not win the game, uh, they are always interesting to look at because yes. Kirk Cousins uh, basically looked at those prime time statistics and said, you know what? Uh, I'm going to go 30 for 37. Mm -hmm. I'm going to throw for damn near 300 yards and I'm going to throw three motherfucking touchdown passes. He did throw picks, but you know, nobody's perfect. Yeah, happens. Uh, Justin Jefferson obviously caught an enormous amount of balls. Dude loves ball. Uh, (laughs) I always love it when, when the media guys, you know what? He's just one of those guys. He loves ball. Loves ball. Loves ball. That's such a dumb statement, I think. Uh, anyway, he had nine catches for 139 yards and a yeah. touchdown, uh, which helped him to pass Randy Moss for most receiving yards in the first three years of a career. Crazy. Interesting. Um, the league's Moss, different, though. It is different. Moss, Moss, had 4, 000, yeah. Moss had 4,163 yards in his first three years. Jefferson now has 4,248, and he's got six games to go. <laughs> wow. Uh, so, Interesting. Adam Thielen played good in this game too. He had a touchdown. Um, their new tight end, TJ Hawkinson, he got into the end zone. Yeah. Um, and the Kirk, Vikings Kirk had, was dealing though. He was dealing. He was, and the Vikings had one of these rare performances where they finished the game as strongly as they started it. That's been the yeah. problem for them all year. They score early, and then they start getting caught up too. Now you can say it's a problem, but I mean, what are they? What's uh, their record? Yeah, exactly, they eight and two. And yeah, um, it's not that big of a problem. Uh, but yeah, it, it it's definitely the way to win football games. Um, and we shat upon Mac Jones so much, mm. call him bottom five quarterback. Mm. But he looked like a serviceable quarterback in this game. I won't say he was sp- looks spectacular, he did. but he had almost four hundred yards passing, two That's touchdowns. True. That's true. You know, it was, it was good, man. Good job, good job by him, man. Mm. I'm, I'm, I was like glad for him, but mm. he was he didn't look good enough that I was terrified of him. The Patriots do uh, appear to have some issues when they get into the red zone. I, I read somewhere that they're like 31st in the league. Oh, really? With the ball in the red zone. They like went over touchdowns three. or what? Yeah, they went over three in the red zone in this game too. Um. Which obviously, I don't think you can really talk about this game without bringing up this this controversial uh, catch. Hunter, Hunt, Hunter Henry, is it a catch? Mm. Is it not? It, you know. What'd you think? I act, my thought on it is, you know what? Actually, it, it, my thought was that it's a, it, it was not a catch. Okay. Um, 
That's what I was at. I said it's And I understand, but I also understand why people want to argue that it should be a catch. But the reality is that the way the rule is written, if the ball touches the ground, which it did, Mm -hmm. there were, I saw some people saying the ball never touched the ground, but if you look at it from the reverse angle, you can see that it clearly touches the ground. And, and he did sort of momentarily bobble the ball after having lost possession and then regain possession. Now, in a perfect world, I think the rules should be rewritten to where that qualifies as a catch to a certain degree, I think, because I'd like to see that be a touchdown. I kind of like that being a catch. But in the same way that you just said, like, it's, uh, I was arguing that it's a shame that that CD Lamb yeah. call doesn't count. It's the same thing. Like, yes, I get it. His toes are in bounds, but his heels came out. Yeah. I personally would like to see that be counted as a touchdown, but I understand the way the rules work. And I also agree that it, it was the right call. Um, this to me is very similar. Yeah, I agree. I, when I saw it, I was like, uh, a lot of times I say the eye test. If I see the ball touch the ground and then the ball moves when it's coming up, it's like, damn, I don't know. It, it seemed pretty simple to me. Hmm. And then I found out there was a debate about it. I was like, oh, this one fucking catch. Sorry. But I also hate the pictures with a deep passion that burns within. So, yeah. There's that. Yeah. So, fuck them. It wasn't a catch. Vikings win. Uh, and they are now, did I say, are they eight and two? Is that true? The Vikings, yes. Wow. Nine and two. Nine and two. Shit. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. And they were saying, like, the uh, with the amount of yards they got and all of this and that, that the, there's the record for teams in that position with 170 and zero coming into that game. And now it's 170 and one with the lopsided of the, the, the pictures out did them and everything, but the scoreboard, they also gave up a kick return for a touchdown. So that was a big play too. Yeah. yeah. You know, that pissed off bill Belichick being a special teams coach from the start. Do your job, do your job. We're on to Cincinnati. Yeah. We're on to Cincinnati. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, the next game we got is the uh, Browns versus the Buccaneers. Somebody called this an upset. I think I know who it is. Let's go. Brownies, overtime win. <laughs> <laughs> I went. Uh, went uh, I have a, a hot take about this later in this episode. Okay. About this uh, something. Related I'm to this, to that. but yeah, the Browns, uh, the Browns upset the the Bucks. You called it. You got three points on that. I thought I called the Patriots beating the Vikings, but I was wrong. That was my guess. I went yeah. for the upset. I went for the upset. Thought I was gonna hit that. Uh, but yeah, the Browns did it, man. Um, to me, the biggest highlight of the game was Jacoby Brissett running downfield, making a block to spring uh, running back for a touchdown. Put the safety on his ass. Now, that it was I'm an glad underhand you scoop that. block. <laughs> it was yeah. an underhand scoop block. One of the worst block, technical blocks I've ever seen. But, hey, he put the safety on the ground. And the safety is going to have to live through that when they do the tape review. <laughs> the entire defense that, is laughing at him probably right now. I'm, gra- I'm glad that you started with Jacoby Brissett um, because he was obviously playing in what is likely his last game of the season. Yeah. Um, with Deshaun Watson coming back next week, um, yeah. I think came out and decided to make a statement so that everybody would put some motherfucking spec on his name. Yes. Yes. Exactly. That's, that's what I think happened. Put some respect on my name. Yeah. Uh, the game was tied at the half. Mm-hmm. The Bucks scored a touchdown in the third quarter to go up seventeen to ten. But after that, the Browns' defense completely shut down the Buccaneers. Who's the Bucks' uh, allowing- quarterback? I don't. He's some guy that he's played for a long time. He's kind of old. I don't remember. Okay. Uh, but they only allowed fifty yards of total offense after God. that touchdown. Damn. Forty-three passing attempts. Hmm. The Browns are obviously known as a team that you can run on, but they basically lowered the hammer on the Bucks' run game. There was no Lenny Fournette in this one, and this Rashad White rookie, who was such a beast in the Germany game, he only had. What, 64 yards on 14 carries? Half of those yards came on one play. Right? Yeah, he had the big run. I thought for sure, uh, I had snuck a bet in. I'm sorry, Skiff. I had snuck a bet in that he would get over on you. I wanted to bet against, we mentioned it 
in the mm. show, but um, in our betting episode. But I was like, shit, I for- we forgot to bet that. So I just put a bet on ag- betting against the Browns' rush defense seems like the thing to do for the rest of the season. So I was going to test it out, and I put a little money on it, and he was a one yard shy <laughs> of going over on yards. So I lost some- us a little bit of money. Sorry, mm. man. That's all right. But yeah, he had that big run. I thought we were going to bust it. Well, to be fair, the Browns had a pretty hard time moving the ball throughout the majority of this game, too. But with yeah. the game on the line, yep, just over two minutes on the clock, Brissett, who used to be a backup to Tom Brady, mm-hmm. showed his old mentor how to put together <laughs> a late game, mm-hmm. game-changing drive. Okay? Six plays, 46 yards, um, thanks to... You know, and honestly, the field position, you kind of have to go back a bit and, and say thanks to back to back sacks by Miles Garrett on the previous drive that, that gave him that great field position. Miles Garrett had a great, uh, he, he really stepped up late and kind of put the bucks on their ass. Um, they anyway, they ate up most of the clock. It obviously climaxes with this ridiculous one handed touchdown catch by David and Joku. Yeah. Oh, man. Man, Does where did he go to like- school at? I think he went to a place called the, not the W, just the, he went to the U, I think. <laughs> yeah, he went to the U. Finally, I could do that. Uh, I mean, it feels like every week we get some crazy one-handed catch. It's yeah. Like, it's it's got to be the gloves. It's It must be, yeah. Both teams, okay, so that sent the game to overtime. Both teams were forced to punt in overtime. Mm. Both teams were out here struggling to move yeah. the ball. Um. <laughs> Brissett gets the ball back again, just over two minutes to go. He throws this deep 45 yard shot to Amari Cooper who had dropped a couple of balls in this game. So thankfully he hauled that one in. Uh, And then, you know, they get the Browns get down to the two yard line. And with only 19 seconds left in overtime, Brissett hands the ball to my man, a grown ass man. Who I have failed to mention, who who I have I haven't said a word about this man in this game so far, right? But he had I don't even know how many carries he had, but he damn sure had over a hundred yards. He also had sixteen yards receiving, which is nothing to write home about. But what the fuck? The game's on the line. They give him the ball. He's on the doorstep of victory, and there he is, suited up for the job. Cue up the grapefruit, because you know who I'm getting ready to send it to my man. Well, the bulldog Nick Chubb. Let's fucking go. <laughs> Nick Chubb was yeah. a beast in this game. He had 116 yards on uh, 26 carries. Mm-hmm. Y'all well thought done. I wasn't going to mention my man Nick Chubb. Shit. <laughs> you didn't mention him <laughs> last week. That's true. He didn't. Well, I mentioned that he didn't play very well. <laughs> <laughs> didn't mention that. Okay. I was going to say because uh, they ran up against the Dolphins. But anyway, uh, the, uh, <laughs> so that game, um, I don't know. I don't know what else to say about the game. I wanted to move on to the next game. Unless you have more, we got the Nick Chubb. No, that game. that was my uh, that was my cum shot. <laughs> I'm done with that game. Uh, the next <laughs> next game is the Bengals Titans in uh, what we thought was going to be a revenge game, uh, mm-hmm. which is why I picked the Titans to win. But the Bengals came out and won that game. Shout out to the Bengals. Shout out this to game Joe had Burrow. A, this game had a real classic feel to it mm-hmm. for me. Yeah, this reminded me of a game that. I don't know why it reminded me of like a game from like, a my, like just an old school white knuckle yeah. kind of game. Uh, both defenses played pretty well. Mm-hmm. Um, however, unlike the playoff game where the Titans managed to sack Joe Burrow nine right. times, yeah. they only got to him once in this game. Not only that, the Titans barely touched him. Coach of the year, baby. Um, so the O line, which is you know something we've been complaining about all year. Had a pretty good game, and this is what I thought was going to be the 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 difference maker in this was the coaching. Mm-hmm. But um, hey, man, Zach Taylor is shutting me up, man. Well, also you kind of have to again. We do this week after week, giving a shout yeah. out to Lou yeah. Anarumo. Yeah, I mean the Bengals D really kind of wins the game in yeah. this one. I mean they oh, completely yeah. shut down. They shut down uh, Derrick Henry. They held him to only 38 yards on 17 carries. He had 79 yards receiving, but what are you going to do? You know what I mean? It's like, is there anything scarier in space than Derrick Henry? Uh, Probably even in outer space. (laughs) (laughs) Just Derrick Henry in outer space. The asteroid's like, nah, player. Nah, player. (laughs) 
I ain't fucking with that big brother right there, man. <laughs> man, I think you just may have launched a brilliant idea for a new like Saturday morning cartoon, Derrick Henry in space. Uh, been... <laughs> I love it. Yeah, just uh, takes a rocket ship out there and saves planets from asteroids and stuff. Yeah. The only reason that Derrick Henry does not have a touchdown to his to his stat line in this game is because he fumbled the ball yeah. on the one yard line into the end zone. Uh, oh yeah. And, and, and luckily for them, and yeah. actually luckily for me too, because I had Trayvon Burks in my fantasy team this week, <laughs> he fell on the ball in the end zone. I his was first like, touchdown oh. of the season. His first touchdown of the season. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, yes! <laughs> that seems like a flyer pick too. Like, yeah, let me take him off the bench and see what happens. Yeah. yeah and he does that yeah. for you. T. Higgins had a night, 114 yards and a touchdown. How good is He's Samaj good- P-Run? Yeah, him too. Yeah, I was going to say, like, Higgins and Piran, they have really stepped up with the injuries to Mixon and Chase. Like, Samaj mm. Piran had a stiff arm in this game. Mm. I think it was on the first play of the game, actually. Yeah. And he bounced yeah. this dude like a basketball off the ground. Hey, I always think of the guys who's going to be in the film room just shaking their head. <laughs> And we got us another one, man. It's the second one. We got to call him like the the film room moment. <laughs> another. But this film is moment. um this is two weeks in a row where this dude has stepped up in the absence of Joe Mixon and had yeah, a hell man. of a game. Mixon's supposed to be back this week too, I believe. Hmm. Um. A lot is being made of Mike Vrabel's decision to kick a field goal. Yeah. When he's down by a touchdown, on a fourth and five with six minutes to go in the game. I don't. I don't agree with that. I don't. I. I think he did the right thing. I don't know. It, I mean, it's not like the Bengals were running up the score like crazy. They had twenty tr- points. True. I, I mean, know. I guess the real. You know, hindsight is twenty twenty. Obviously, mainly the people that are complaining about this are doing so because you know once the Bengals got the ball, yeah, uh, they never gave it up. Um. So. I don't know. Vrabel wanted his defense to go out there and make a play, and, and right. it didn't happen. Um, I like uh, <laughs> Jalen Ramsey. He's like, yeah, we, we we make a play, and then we go on the sidelines, and then the offense comes back over to like, hey, man, make a play, guys. <laughs> mm. So, yeah, the offense got to do something too, man. I don't know. I I wouldn't put that much faith in Ryan Tannehill. And I don't feel either, like uh, – Honestly, either way – I, you know, he's got a lot of rope to work with. The Titans are Definitely. still in firm control of the AFC South at seven and four. Um, For now, man. The Colts are coming, baby. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, right. Jeff Saturday, the revenge of Jeff, Jeff Saturday. Yeah. The uh, the Bengals, however, are sneaking up on the on the Ravens for the AFC North. Uh, and the mm. Ravens are out here struggling. We'll get to them in a minute. But yeah, we will. Um, Bengals are surging and everyone is starting to get excited. You know, kind of like, oh, remember last year? Yeah, like, oh, they're the team. Uh, they're the kryptonite oh, of the team. All right. Uh, speaking of uh, wet dreams, my Dolphins are looking good, baby. Dolphins wow. came out and handled their business against a very inferior team. This is not the week for the black coach. Uh, Todd Bowles. <laughs> Look lost. I mean, I, I meant to say that earlier too when we did the Bucks game. I always try to defend the black coaches, man. But uh, I mean, they. I mean, I think they need a chance to be bad. Todd Bowles is really taking that chance. <laughs> this is the mm. second time taking the team and just like losing, like, like uh, no identity. He did it with the Jets when he was at the helm for three years, and now he's doing it with the uh, with the Bucks. I. I actually give Todd Bowles a bit of a pass in this particular situation regarding the Bucks because I think I personally think that when the season's over and people start to kind of pick through the ashes of it, mm. uh, I think you're going to find out that all of this shit going on with Tom Brady is having a huge effect on the team. Oh yeah, possibly. I, yeah, I forgot about that. We'll see, man. He needs to get, but uh, he needs to have a good coaching season if he wants to keep coaching. Like, even after this gig is up, maybe he can get another try somewhere. But uh, I agree. Uh, but honestly, fuck the Bucks. Walk me through this beatdown because this is just like <laughs> this I one mean, was. Well, I had a show on Sunday, so I didn't even get to watch it live. But I did my thing where mm-hmm. I did the show, kept the spoilers away, and then got home, squinting my eyes because for some reason the Game Pass app doesn't hide the scores on the Stupid. TV. 
It does on the tablets and on the phone, but on the TV, they show you the score. It's probably some NFL rights issue or whatever, but right. they don't answer when you write them about it. So I was squinting. I did my routine where I squint my eyes, and then I turned the game on So because they do have it kind of light, though, so you can't really see the score unless you – you know what right. I mean? Dolphins gave me a nice little like I was like oh all right I I almost texted you in the middle of this game and, and then I I picked up my phone and I was like bro this is for, and I was like oh wait no shit he doesn't want to know yeah and so I was like delete 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 they delete they appreciate that man but I had to, I turned off all notifications anyway <laughs> I take all precautions I, I felt rude because my you know my brother in law and them they were all watching and I, was, I felt rude because uh, they were talking to each other I couldn't participate but the Dolphins looked great uh, Tua. Was even off a little bit. Yep. And I thought about how good it feels to know that he was off, but was still playing better than more than half of the quarterbacks in the league. Mm. It was a, it was just a good feeling. I haven't had this feeling as a for a quarterback uh, in a long time. Like feeling comfortable that we got our guy kind of feeling. And mm. uh, he didn't play much after. I mean, they started getting to him, and then the left tackle got hurt. And they were like, "All right, let's just let's shut it down." And they took. That two was the, one of the one of the questions I want to ask. Like, how worried are you about that? About his health. No, about oh the injuries on the line. Yeah, we had two injuries on the offensive line. I'm starting to get because you lost Teron Armstead, right? Yeah, yeah, he's got like a pectoral or something like that. That's always mm. bad for a lineman. Uh, mm. And then we had somebody else had some type of lower extremity injury. I don't know. Also, so. I think Jeff Wilson left this game at one point. He came back. Uh, he did come back. But uh, who else? Raheem Mostert didn't play. I guess that's no. whatever. So, yeah, we'll uh, see. Uh, they're relatively healthy. We'll see. But we had the bye week already. I don't know. But right now, Miami looked like they're cooking. They beat the shit out of the team. That, but once the, but it showed how they're not that deep. Because mm. they also had a defensive touchdown. Haven't seen that this season much. Mm. You know what I mean? We did have a, like a punt block for a touchdown. But you know what I mean? It's like if defense starts coming alive and they're getting healthy – Miami's gonna be a force to be reckoned. Oh yeah, didn't uh, X had like a, a fumble, like a scoop and score kind of. Yeah, thing, right? and they're hitting hard. There were a few hits. Like X knocked somebody off his feet while he was standing. <laughs> yeah. And then the that fumble was caused by Eric Rowe, who hit somebody. Like if they're flying around hitting people like that, I'm gonna love this playoffs. They're gonna start looking more and more like knocked a him off team. his feet and gave him herpes. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I was happy about that. Uh, Dolphins won as you predicted in the flip and pick them. Then we got the Bears. Uh, I picked them to lose to the Jets and they did it for me. Uh, mm. But it was Trevor Simeon out there uh, in his MVP run. What was uh, the score in this game? I don't remember. It was big. It was like thirty-one to ten or something like that. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm looking it up now. It was a beatdown. Uh, th- yeah, thirty-one to ten. Look at that recall. Damn. <laughs> 30, this was funny the way this game started because Damn! we thought this. <laughs> <I'm> sorry. <laughs> we thought this was going to be Mike White versus mm-hmm. Trevor Simeon mm-hmm. stepping in. You know, obviously stepping in for the injured Justin Fields. Uh, Mike White coming in for the very shitty uh, Zach Wilson. Uh, and then 30 minutes before the game, they announced that Trevor Simeon was injured. He had injured his oblique muscle while warming up for the game. <laughs> so they were going to roll with Nathan Perlman. Oh, shit. He's still in the a, league? <clears throat> a dude who has not thrown an NFL pass since 2020 when he was a backup in Las Vegas. And then about 10 minutes before the game started, the Bears said, no, 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 Simeon's good to go. <laughs> I was just like, what is happening over there? We did not want Nathan Perlman to <laughs> yeah. step into this game. And then Either it, way. And in the background, did. you see the old Chargers doctor like, hi, guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Or Zach Wilson saying, uh, I can play. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I Zach Wilson in street clothes is fantastic. <laughs> yeah. It, 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 it didn't matter who they rolled out for the no. Bears because the Jets came out and showed – Zach mm-hmm. Wilson, what a team looks like with a proper mm-hmm. quarterback under center. Mike White, I mean, you know, w- everything that I'm going to say about Mike White needs to be put into perspective because we went through this yeah, last year. Exactly. It, so, but it has to be said, he was damn near perfect. He went 22 for 28, yeah. 315 yards, three touchdown passes in the rain, no less. This is a terrible weather game. Yeah. Uh, he got everyone involved. He threw completions to 10 different receivers. Uh, the main ones being Garrett Wilson, who had five for 95 and two touchdowns, averaging 19 yards per catch. And 
Elijah Moore, who wanted to quit the team a few yeah. weeks ago. He had two targets, uh, but he also caught both of them for 64 yards and a touchdown. Yeah. Um, Mike White had five receivers with over 10 yards per reception in this game. Damn. This Looking is deep, baby. This is what Zach Wilson was not doing. Yeah. Uh, Mike White had 149.3 passer rating. <laughs> I mean, again, we went through this we know, last yeah, year. Yeah, we know what's going to happen. He threw for like 400 yards and four yeah. touchdowns last year, and then he fell off a cliff. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. But, um, hey, you hey, know. But while he's, while he's, while he, when he's hot, he's white hot. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And then, unfortunately for the Bears, to add injury to insult, um, they will be without the services of Darnell Mooney for the rest of the season, who left this game with an ankle injury. Oh, damn. Uh, Bears fall to three and nine. Jets improve to seven and four. They're only one game out of first place. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, interesting. Man. That AFC East man, no team with a losing record. Worst team is the Patriots with six and five. It's like I did not did not see that coming. Did not see it coming. The Jets are the biggest surprise out of the AFC. <laughs> um, another surprise. You picked the. Uh, <laughs> You picked the Falcons to upset the Washington Commanders. Mm. And, and the only thing that they upset was me. <laughs> I am so upset. <laughs> I can't find him, man. I don't think I put um, it over here. I have to put it over here. I am so upset. <laughs> I would like to give our listeners an early Christmas present. Uh-oh. For the first time in the history of this podcast... I do not want to spend an eternity talking about this Falcons game. Oh. Okay. This one is very, very easy. Both quarterbacks sucked. Mm-hmm. We couldn't tackle Brian Robinson, mm-hmm. um, who had over 100 yards. Most of those yards likely after contact because the Falcons, you know, they, they couldn't catch cold in this game. Um, but with the game on the line, the commanders, you know, missing the extra point, we put together this touchdown drive. We get it all the way down to the four yard line and you got four running options. Tyler Algiers, Scorderell Patterson, Caleb Huntley, or Marcus Mariota himself, all of which had averaged four yards per carry in this game. Ooh. But on second down and goal with four yards to get into the goddamn end zone, Marcus Mariota drops back to pass and throws a fucking interception. I, I don't understand who made that decision. Mm. Um, and then, of course, like uh, you could say, like, well, that's the ball game. No, of course. The Falcons don't just lose football yeah, games. You gotta torture them. You gotta, you gotta add that extra layer, right? We forced the commanders to punt on the three and out. We get our second chance, but we put that chocolate cherry on top of this multi-layered <laughs> pile of shit by running into the punter. Oh, uh, yeah. And then that's the ball game. Tyra said it best, man. I was rooting for you. We were all rooting for you. How dare you? And then even Charlie Murphy. He's a habitual line stepper. <laughs> and then the uh, Pastor Jack Jackson, whatever his name is. What's wrong with y'all? <laughs> That's it. That's it. That's and all that's that what needs pisses me said. off. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Honestly. I'm sorry, man. It uh again, I just keep reiterating the same thing week after week. I'm um I'm, I'm ready to see Desmond Ritter. I just I feel like we are our te- yeah. the Falcons are in the same position that a lot of teams are in and everybody's out here fucking shuffling the deck and trying new shit except for us and it's starting to piss me off a little bit. I'm sorry, I'm done. Yeah, agreed. Thank you, Ron Rivera. <laughs> uh, then we got the Broncos and the Panthers, man. Mm. The Broncos, the Broncos coming out. Bro. <laughs> the Broncos couldn't even. Did you even pinch the bitch? That's the, that's a, that's the sound that I need. Uh, this is definitely the shit bowl of the week. Brought to you by X Lax for sure. A hundred percent. Yeah, they uh, they were just. I feel like I'm going to shit my pants just getting ready to talk about this game. (laughs) Oh, man. Sam Darnold 
came out of the woodwork. He completed eleven passes, man. And they were talk. If you watch this, the the broadcast, they were talking about it like he just was slinging that thing. Sam Donald was a great man. He's like, shut the fuck up, man. This is two bad teams out here batting it up, shitting it up out there. Uh, Deontay Freeman, I guess, is the the player of the game. I'd say. Sure. Yeah. Uh, he, he, Deontay Foreman, you mean? For, I'm, oh, oh, shit, my bad. Oh, shit. <laughs> you know what? Uh-huh. I was thinking about... Who's racist you, now? Huh? <laughs> Who's racist now? Racist. I was thinking about your old guy, man. Y'all used to have a Deontay Freeman. That's true, we did. Same number, right? 33? Uh, it water yeah. the 33, too. Uh, but yeah. anyway, um, Hustle and Bustle Russell. I watched Kill Bill 2. Uh-huh. It was on. It was randomly on uh, one of the movie channels, Cinemax or some shit. I don't know, uh, but that's one of those rewatchable movies. If that's on, I'm gonna watch it. I really like. Uh, I like to see all the different stuff Tarantino's doing. I really like uh, Kill Bill too. Uh, mm. This uh, wonderful story of revenge. Mm. There's a scene when uh, <laughs> when we learn about her instructor Pai Mei. Mm. But and I was I love that scene. And what you're doing with your beard reminds me of that scene too. When Pi May keeps flipping his beard uh, throughout the whole uh, the yeah. <laughs> uh, so uh, what I always forget because I think about that scene. It is a flashback of her training. Is that it happens while she is nailed in a coffin, mm. <laughs> right? She's thinking back on her training, which teaches her to punch her way out of this uh coffin makeshift coffin that's created uh by her enemy and it's highly unlikely that that ever happened and that's how sure. i feel about russell wilson mm. i feel like we can nail this motherfucker in the coffin he looks so bad my my first thought i thought about regard- as i watched the movie i thought about russell wilson yeah like the nail. That's a great, it's a great comparison. He um, said he's in the coffin with his boots down there, <laughs> with a knife in his shoe, hands tied up by a rope with a flashlight. Mm. Right and now, and all you want to say is, "Man, did this dude just do this?" <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like, man, he's so. I, I I I don't know, man. I don't know if we could blame Nathan uh, uh, Hackett, Nathaniel Hackett. I'm surprised he still got a job right now. I I kept refreshing my feed after the game. Yeah. I thought for sure he was going to be fired before the end of you the You said that. You picked that the Broncos would lose and they would fire Nathaniel Hackett. And he I thought for sure he would be done by the end of the night. Yeah, you're right. Russell Wilson was bad. He was 19 for 35, 142 yards and a touchdown. He got sacked three times. He fumbled the ball on one of those sacks. Uh, I mean, the Broncos were down 23 to three before they finally scored this late fourth quarter garbage touchdown. I mean, they couldn't do anything right. Nothing, and and they scored their customary ten points that they that's like on brand. That's like a ten point. We've been talking about this ten point ceiling of theirs, and here it was again. I I mean it's um, it's 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 baffling. Honestly. It makes me wonder what if they would have hired Wilkes, who was on the other sideline, mm. who took that team, got rid of the best players, and then now they're inspired playing inspired football, and uh, with the I'd say a less talented team and beating mm-hmm. the Broncos. Sure. It's like, I wonder if they would have picked a different, how does, how, how do you have these interviews and you pick this guy? I, I don't know who else they interviewed, but it must be so, it, it couldn't have been, uh, it, it must be so disappointing. Yeah. To be a Broncos fan. Yes. Because your, your, your level of hope before the season started was through the roof. Right. Yeah. I mean, you're getting a, a, a quarterback at the level of Russell Wilson or the way we used to think of him. You're thinking, shit, problem solved, bro. We've been yeah. over here rolling with like Teddy Bridgewater and Drew Locke for the last couple of years. I mean, should they have that crazy game where they had to have a wide receiver be a quarterback because of COVID? Yeah. Uh, and and yeah. Th- this felt like problem solved, man, but it yep. is not. They had so many problems with this team. It's, and, and I, I don't know. I don't know how you but feel. Oh, go ahead. I was just going to say that we, I, I can't, we can't move on from this game before we talk about what might have been one of the funniest touchdowns I've probably ever seen this year. 
uh, where Sam Darnold fumbles the snap. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> falls on top of it yes. and literally rolls into the end zone. I'm sitting there thinking, Kill Bill esque. Guys, what are we what are we doing here? Yeah. What yeah. what is this? <laughs> and it worked. I was like, somebody had to have touched him. Nope, he rolled two yards into the end zone. No, sir. Touchdown. Uh a person who I consider one of the best full football writers is Peter King. He's hmm. been at it for a long time. He's got this Monday morning football thing. The uh, Monday morning quarterback, I think it's called uh, this column uh, that he uh, that he had back in the day, but now he has a football morning in America. They call it. But Peter King's been a great mind for a long time, and he wrote, "I think I will not be surprised if Nathaniel Hackett makes it to the end of the season, but I will be extremely surprised if he isn't one and done." Right. I, I think there's no way this dude returns, and they're going to be paying three people next year. Mm. Sucks for them, but you got to mm. do it. You bought yeah. that. Imagine that you bought. <laughs> he's like a, uh, like a fucked up plumbing, right? Right. So these owners just bought this new house, man. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and this dude is the the fucked up plumbing they got to deal with right away. Totally. Immediately. Just fucked up. Yeah. The the Broncos are are now three and eight. The Panthers improved to four and eight. Mm-hmm. And while that sounds horrible. The Panthers are tied for last place in the NFC South, but only one game away from being in first place in the <laughs> NFC South. <laughs> That's an indictment on the NFC South. Bucks, Falcons, Panthers, Saints obviously make up the NFC South. All four teams have a sub 500 record at this wow. moment. Wow. Absolutely pathetic. Um, what year was that? Yeah. I want to say the beast mode year. That was when. Oh, no, no. The, the, since then, the then Washington Redskins went in mm-hmm. to the playoffs with a losing record. Hmm. But the beast mode, uh, the beast quake yeah, that's run, true. that was a, hmm. I think they were nine and seven. Everybody was like, how? Or like, whatever. Uh, it might have been seven and nine for them, too. Hmm. Hmm. Shouldn't happen, man. Um, no. But the division thing, I like it, though. It, it, it hmm. makes sense that the division winner goes to the playoffs. Sure. Uh, Ravens, uh, Jaguars. Uh, speak, speaking of pathetic, <laughs> Justin Tucker earned his check. God damn. Almost hmm. bailed them out again. Missing the final field goal uh, of the game, but the uh, the Jaguars, man, they had some bite and they they came in and uh, and it was an upset. What is this? Like the fifth or sixth times the Ravens have blown a, a sizable lead? fourth quarter lead this season? Yeah, it's up there. It wasn't as big of a lead as they've blown already this season, but hmm. it was also against the Jaguars. So. The Ravens' passing game has suddenly turned into just an absolute pile of trash apparently uh lamar jackson has the worst he's worst in the league at uh like downfield throws apparently. i believe it but i think he, he was he lost hollywood brown that was his one guy last year uh and bateman is hurt so i don't know who he throws he's, deep to he um he was 16 for 32 damn 50 percent 254 oh. yards and a touchdown um uh, he missed a lot of throws, mm-hmm. and it's not like he was under pressure because the Jags only sacked him once, yeah. and they didn't really have a lot of QB hits either. Um, they the- also had some turnover issues. Lamar, mm-hmm. he fumbled Gus at Edward, the goal line. Lamar fumbled. Gus Edwards fumbled, uh, which is a shame because the Ravens, team, you know, given how well they've played in in the last several weeks. Um, 27 I mean, should be enough for them to win a game. Exactly. I mean, the Ravens, D, they only allowed 38 rushing yards in this game. Damn. Um, the Jags also lost Travis Etienne in this one. I don't think it's serious. Yeah. I think he's going to be back. Um, okay. Good. But if we're going to hand out flowers, we got to hand them out to T-Law and Associates, like you yes. said, because this dude balled the fuck out, bro. Yeah. 29 for 37. Yes. 321 yards. Uh, three touchdown passes. He and Zay Jones had a thing. No going interceptions. On. That's been his thing. The interceptions. <clears throat> yeah, he and Zay Jones had a had a had a thing going, <laughs> going on. on. <laughs> eleven, eleven <laughs> receptions, one hundred and forty-five yards. Jamichael Hasty, mm. uh, who didn't do super great running the ball. Uh, after Etienne went out, but he did have sixty-seven yards receiving and a touchdown. Yeah, and the balls. The brass balls on Doug mm. Peterson. Who's surprised, okay? though? Who's surprised? 
Nobody. But it made me think about David Tepper and his brass ball plaque that we've mentioned so many times <laughs> on this podcast. Yeah. I actually think that David Tepper should have to send that thing out week after week. Brass balls of the week? <laughs> to a to a player or a coach who yeah. made the bravest decision in a football game. Mm. Um, or a fan. Because- it should go to the guy who stormed the field in the World Cup. With the with the rainbow flag and the yeah. uh, Ukraine uh, shirt yeah. and uh, yeah, yeah, because um, down by seven, two minutes to go, T Law just starts carving up the mm. Ravens secondary like it's leftover Thanksgiving turkey. Never mm. rattled, never cracks. Uh, he answered a third and twenty one with a sixteen yard shot, and then followed up a fourth and five with a ten yard shot. Yeah. Uh, just kept marching down the field. Eventually, Marvin Jones gets in for a 10-yard touchdown, but then down by one, Peterson says, fuck it, I want the dub. Mm. Uh, And then T-Law drops back to fire just an absolute rocket on a rope, back shoulder to Zay Jones, two-point conversion, ball game. Um, I mean, I got to admit, I was definitely rooting for Justin Tucker to hit that 67-yard field goal just for the sake of history. It would have been fun. Um, But he was at least two yards short. Yeah, you got to be uh, in Denver for that one. He was at least two yards short. If they're in Denver, he makes it. You know what I mean? With the thin air? Yeah. But that's where yeah. all the records are in Denver, and that's why. Or maybe if they but played in, in Mexico. Um, <laughs> well, the la- the one that he kicked last year for the record was in a dome. Oh, yeah. Oh, dome. Yeah. Dome. That was Denver. against Detroit. Um, But the, the air is heavy in Jacksonville. I can tell you that. Oh, it's yeah. humid. Yeah. So I, yeah. I can understand why I didn't make it. Um. The Jacksonville Jaguars mascot got a fair amount of attention in this game. Yeah, he's just like out there, with just a dude in a uh, in a speedo, basically, and a it, hel- and yeah. a hat. It it, it was uh, I, I I gotta say it it was filthy, but I'm a hundred percent here for it. I loved it. Yeah, uh, I thought it was so it it was so North Florida. It hurts. Yep. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> all he needed was a can of beer. Paps. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Little PBR. Yeah. Uh, this was a terrible loss for the Ravens. Yeah. Who who now have the Bengals nipping at their heels. Yeah, but their um, schedule is like, here you go. Here you go, guys. I will see, man. They they seem to have a a, a, a real skill for fucking shit up this year. <laughs> so uh, we'll see. Got that bird. Got that bird flu from the Falcons. They got the Broncos. And then they have the uh, Steelers. Oh, that's going to be tough. Steelers are coming alive right now. And then they have the Browns. Okay. I guess it's not as easy easy as I thought. I think they might be in trouble if they don't get their shit together. Then they play the Falcons, and everybody's scared of them. You know what? They were talking on NFL Network yesterday about Lamar Jackson, and they were talking about how – you know, this is obviously a contract year. He's been turning down the negotiations mm. and all that stuff. And and they were basically bringing up the point that <clears throat> if this season doesn't end well, he's really taken a huge risk yeah. of not getting the contract that he wants to get from the Ravens. And I immediately was like, uh, well, the Falcons would love to have him. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> yeah. if, the, if the Ravens don't want to pay him, I sure as hell. I sure That's the as hell thing. A lot of teams will. don't want him. He'll be all right. He'll but they got fine, but... they got the Broncos, the Steelers twice, the Bengals, and the Browns. That's what they got left. And the Browns are going to have Deshaun uh, Watson. He would look good in the A, my friend. I'm telling you yeah, that. Yeah, they would embrace him so much. He's from Florida. Ooh. He would, yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, the next game uh, is the Cardinals and Chargers. I picked the mm. Chargers to win this game, and they did. Mm-hmm. They uh, they beat the, the Cardinals. Um, I mean – Baby Yoda's trying, but it's that time of year, man. This is Cardinals losing season. Yeah. Fall off of Cliff Kingsbury. Yeah. At it again. I mean, look, this this story of this game is the 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 late game winning heroics, obviously, but I, I think what happened before that is pretty interesting too, because it the team looks very different with Kyler Murray under center. Yeah. Uh, he had a fairly different, uh, a fairly decent game. Eighteen for twenty nine, one hundred ninety one yards. Two Imagine if he passes. studied. I know he got to do his homework, uh, man. He was out there scrambling. 
Mm-hmm. 56 yards on the ground and a rushing touchdown. Yeah. Um, James Conner had a monster night with 120 yard, uh, 20 yards on 25 carries plus the receiving touchdown. Uh, D hop got in the end zone too. Uh, the, the Cardinals were basically leading for almost the entire game. Yeah. Um, but Justin Herbert, I mean, Jesus, they poked the bear the ball. Man. He threw the ball a lot. Yeah, 47 times. Okay, 47 times he threw it. 35 completions to his credit. Yeah. Um, The Cardinals D pretty much shut down the Chargers run game. Um, They also sacked Herbert four times. Mm. Um, But he just kept coming out there and slinging it to DeAndre Carter, Austin Eckler, Keenan Allen. They all had touchdown catches. It feels like Josh Palmer always just is a – if you're rooting against them, you hate that Mm. dude. He catches mm. like at the biggest moments. He makes a big catch. Yeah. And he was doing it in this game too. The other person that you probably hate if you're playing against the Chargers would be Derwin James. This guy. Oh. Whew, my goodness. He, he got, had, he got, he got uh, the, the battle between him and uh, DeAndre Hopkins was cool to watch. It was. Because he would get messed up on him and uh, they were going. Did you see that catch? Yeah. Left yeah. offhand, I think he's right handed. Offhand, yeah. falling to the ground, just squeezes the ball at the nose of the ball, and then brings he it was, in. He was everywhere. He he, yeah. I think he forced the James Conner to fumble. Um, he had a ton of big game tackles. No, I was like I meant the catch by uh, Hopkins. I'm sorry. Oh yeah, that one too. The squeeze. He, he had he was blank. He was all over D Hop all night long. D Hop yeah. obviously still caught a lot of balls. That one in particular was beautiful, yeah. but he managed to pick off Kyler Murray while yes. he was covering DeAndre Hopkins too. Yes. Uh, Derwin James. Derwin James was everywhere. It was yes. like every time always a, a play needed to be made, he was right there in the middle of it. He needs to be um, in the conversation for DPOI. I think agreed. Uh, this one came down to the wire, um, down by a touchdown. Minute thirty three left on the clock. Great field position, thanks to a 20-yard punt return um, that got the Chargers into Cardinals territory. Seven plays later, Herbert throws a 10-yard pass to Austin Eckler, and uh, Brandon Staley decides to whip out his brass balls. Yep. Goes Show for how two. big it is. Yep. And I don't know whose job it was to cover Gerald Everett on the crossing <laughs> route. Um, it was quick, though, man. Yeah? It was like a Texas route. He kind of yeah, like you had stepped to know out and was, came back in. I mean, you had to know that was probably coming. Yeah, you, know? you got to jump in front of the short routes. Yeah, but they, I think it was the play design too, man. Like it just, it's, it stressed the defense. Uh, yeah, it was nice. Sure, that's it was good. good. That's a good and, Madden play. That Texas route, man. <laughs> Texas, let's go. This is like a slant turning mm-hmm. into a cross. I mean, uh, into a out slant turned to in slant. Anyway. Hmm. Uh, go go Chargers. Uh, Herbert's looking good. I mean, this that quarterback class, man. Burrow, Herbert, mm. Tua. Mm. Uh, this one hurts. No, hurts. Yeah, hurts too. Mm. Yeah, yeah. That class is sick. Mm-hmm. Then we got the Seahawks playing against the Raiders, man. Uh, they wrote me off. I ain't right back though. And that was uh Josh McDaniels, if you're asking. Uh. But <laughs> <laughs> They got, they, what do you have to say, Josh? They wrote me off. I ain't right back, though. <laughs> uh, no, Geno Smith came out. Um, he threw for over 300 yards, man. Geno, yeah. he's a starting quarterback in the NFL. Congrats to him, man. I'm glad. I, I had written him off, and I was waiting. The, so the Raiders win this game 40-34 to 34 in overtime, but this game was, was so just wild from the yes. first play all the way to the last play. Fun one. The game starts with Derek Carr throwing an interception on the first play of the game. <laughs> uh, and, by the way, did you see that Seahawks player run onto the field from the sidelines to block? Yes. yes. I was like. How are you allowed to do that? And they got away the ref- with it. Because the referee certainly didn't see it. <laughs> but They're you like, know, this would never heads. happen. We tape, when the tape heads get the all 22, we saw it, right? <laughs> we saw it on the tape because we yeah, got there watching the tape. Um. The, after these two teams traded touchdowns, Derek Carr threw his second pick of the day, but same thankfully guy. for him, same guy, same guy. <laughs> he was able to stay clean after that for the rest of the game. So he, he despite those two picks, 
I always say it, it matters more when you throw your picks, in my opinion. Mm, uh, agree, and agree. I think it was good that he gets them out of the way early. He goes 25 for 36, 295 yards, three mm. touchdown passes. Mm. Like you said, Gino was was also great. 27 mm-hmm. for 37, 328 yards, two touchdown passes, also through a pick. And man, he throws a nice deep ball. Yeah. Doesn't he? Doesn't he throw a nice deep ball? Is that a that Seahawks way? thing, man? Because remember, it Russell kind of used to throw like a great deep ball, too. That's true. Uh, no, actually, I believe Russell Wilson referred to it as a sexy deep ball. Oh, did he? <laughs> it, yeah, there's a, we should put that on the sound. He's like, I throw a sexy deep ball. <laughs> For real. We definitely it's need that there. on the sound. It's out there. Ball. Okay. It's out there. He also uh, says, uh, Broncos country, mm-hmm. let's ride. Let's ride. <laughs> Broncos country, let's ride. Mm. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. Ne- neither defense uh, had a Showed very up. impressive day in the <laughs> secondary. Um, but I guess if you had to say that this came down to one thing, there was there was one team that was able to stop the run while the other one could not. Man. Uh, the Seahawks, Seahawks only had 65 total rushing yards. Um, but Josh motherfucking Jacobs. Oh, my God. <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. 229 yards rushing. Uh, yeah. on 33 carries plus 74 yards receiving. Yes. Right. So Insane. for you Saints fans out there who struggle with math, that's a total of 303 yards from scrimmage. Okay. <laughs> uh, just trust me. Yeah. Not to mention 86 yard game winning run in Man. overtime, a walk off touchdown in Seattle, yeah. silencing the twelves in their own building. Yeah. Man, this dude was a beast. What a game. That's gotta be game of the week though. I heard somebody say after the game, well, Josh, you know, because Josh Jacobs, the Raiders uh, declined to pick up his fifth year option. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and they were like, well, Josh Jacobs is really, uh, you know, creating a difficult decision for the. I was like, Di- no, 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 <laughs> he's not. No, this is not a difficult decision. No, this easy. is he's what you it call easy. a fucking softball, yeah. bro. Yeah. Like right over the, the plate. <laughs> pay the man. <laughs> At fucking it's, waist level. Right here. <laughs> Just fucking pay the man. Yeah, man. Um, uh, but, okay, I'm not here for this, your your take. I know you were just being funny about, about what's his name, McDaniels? Oh, yeah. He, he nearly blew this game in overtime. Of course. Nearly blew this game in overtime. Fourth and two from the Seahawks 38, you have – the most explosive running back on the face of the planet. <laughs> and you ask it, Daniel Carlson, to kick a 56 yard field goal. He misses. And you give the Seahawks great field position. All Gino needs to do is get a couple of chunk plays and they're in field goal range. Yeah. Uh, luckily the defense did their job. They, and, and they saved McDaniel's ass, but can you imagine had they not, oh, it, yeah, that would have been a terrible yeah. decision. Especially with the game, he yeah, because he's got probably what 180 yards by then. It's crazy. 140, 50 yards. Mm. Then we got uh, <clears throat> the Saints. I'm sorry, the Chiefs played the Rams, mm. and what should have been a lopsided ass whooping, but it turned out that the Chiefs are uh, mortal. Mm. I walked away from that one feeling like with a little like, hmm. Mm. right. It, Mahomes looked like he had some uh, some warts. Sure, I mean he did not play the game of his life, um, but he didn't really have to. Uh, yes, the Rams are, have turned into the, the he, bottom bottom. He didn't bottom really have to, hurts. considering that he was going up against Bryce Perkins, yeah, uh, and what used to be one of the most feared d- defenses in the NFL. Um, yeah, but and and I guess you could say I don't know. Aaron Donald had a pretty good game. Yeah. But I, I just don't think the Chiefs really, I you know, I did you ever see that game that they keep talking about leading up to this one? I don't remember. It was probably like four years ago. It was a Monday night football game. It was Rams versus Chiefs, and both teams scored like six touchdowns. It was insane. Mm. It was one oh, of the yes. craziest Monday night football games of all time. Yeah. I just happened to be in the States for Thanksgiving um, and saw that game. It was just one of the best games I've ever seen. This game was not even close to that interesting. Um, no. <clears throat> I mean, you know, the Chiefs did what they had to do, right. and they did it in the way that you would expect them to do it. Mahomes to Kelsey. Uh, 
I mean, they only had a couple of touchdowns and then of course it was four Harrison Butker field goals. Um, that was, I agree, a disappointing performance by chief standards, but more than enough to beat what is turning out to be one of the worst Super Bowl hangovers in NFL history. Yeah. And did you see uh, McVay get absolutely clocked on the sidelines by his own player? He should have gone in the tent after that one. Everyone was like, like, oh, that's a, it's a metaphor for their season. (laughs) Oh man. Well, then we had the saints playing the 49ers and the 49ers pulled it out. Showed how big it is. And the saints didn't even pinch the bitch. Let's go. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. They didn't score at all, man. This one was another shit bowl brought to you by X Lax Candidate, in my opinion. <laughs> um, the 49ers with all those weapons putting up 13 points would yeah. normally spe- spell a loss for them. Uh, but when you're playing against the Saints, mm. who. Um, this just, might have been it for Denny Green, man. Who or, just. Or they couldn't Denny, put a single Denny point. Allen. Yeah, I know. Um, I mean, Isn't that the to second me, time not scoring this year. Yeah, at least. When you wake up in the morning and you look at the box score and you see Andy Dalton as the Saints' leading rusher, something ain't right, okay? Yeah. Because something just ain't right. Um, yeah. The only heard, touchdown yeah. in this game came from what was a pretty awesome catch by Jawan Jennings. Uh, the ball gets tipped by Teron Matthew, um, but the concentration on Jennings – uh, to keep his eye on the ball, he's falling backwards. He pulls it in. Beautiful touchdown catch. It was the only beautiful moment of the game, to be honest. Olave well, um, had a good catch too, right? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> but, sure. No, they did, blanked. They blanked. Oh yeah, no, they blanked the uh, Raiders. That's what it was. Right. So they didn't score in this game, but they. Both uh, teams had a ton of penalties. Um. Yeah, the defense has played well. Kamara only had 13 yards rushing. Kamara almost scored, but he fumbled at the goal line. That was that's always funny as a Falcons fan. Uh, <laughs> um, this is a crazy stat that I saw after the game. The 49ers have outscored their opponents 57 to nothing in the second half God in their last damn. four in their last four games. Damn. Is Lou Anamruma over there somewhere? 57 to nothing in the second half. That's a big thing to look at, too, when you start making playoff bets. Mm. The adjustments must be sick over there. Also, we're going to have to think about it next week when your Dolphins play these 49ers. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah. But it seems like teams, uh, Dolphins Let's seem to be can... attacking the middle of the field in the here's first what half. I... Teams take it away, then they hit the outside. It seems to be. Here's what I need you to do I want Tua and the boys to score 57 points in the second half of this game so we can. <laughs> Sort of even, even this it thing up. Out. Yeah. <laughs> now what? Statist- statisticians. Yeah. Uh, McCaffrey didn't do much in this game either. Uh, uh, and the 49ers, unfortunately for them, again, lost Elijah Mitchell to an MCL injury. I'm pretty yeah. sure he's done for the year. Yeah. Um, the 49ers took over the NFC West lead, as Jonathan Rollins predicted. But oh, I, I was didn't about listen. to say it. <laughs> um, it don't matter. The Colts, the Colts, we both thought the Colts would win. And they're done. Mm. Dunzo. It would have helped that other. And we thought uh, the Ravens were going to win too. And I'm not th- I'm not feeling gonna, that right now at the moment. The Ravens will win. I'm uh, not feeling it. Yeah, you're probably right. Uh, it wasn't our year. Then we got the Packers playing the Eagles. They put up a valiant effort against the Eagles, but the Eagles just happen to be on steroids right now. This, like, yeah. Jalen Hurts is out here playing football with his. Not just hair on fire, scalp, <laughs> neck, cheeks, <laughs> entire uh, upper human body on fire. This dude was out there, man. He looked good, man. Dude ran, dude ran for 157 yards on 17 carries, and then Miles Sanders, you know, backs him up with 21 carries for 143 yards and two touchdowns. I mean, they ran rough shot over yeah. the Packers. Yeah. Um, this is- Rogers was only 11 for 16, 140. Yards, two touchdown passes, and two picks. Uh, and then Jordan Love came in because Rodgers left with this. He's he's playing with a broken thumb, yeah. but he but he had an, a, some sort of an abdominal oblique injury. <laughs> oblique, something. <laughs> no, 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 oblique, no. <laughs> something rather opaque, rather. Um, 
<laughs> yeah, Jordan Love was uh, six for nine, 113 yards. He, mo- he, looked all right. he looked all right moving around and stuff. I was like, okay. Big touchdown to Christian Watson, who is absolutely mm. officially a thing now. Four receptions, 110 yeah. yards. Um, and that one touchdown was it was just, it was mo- it was more Christian Watson than yeah. Jordan Love, yeah. to be honest. It was yeah, like his what speed. Was it? Like Once a, he, it was a crossing route, he hit him short, yeah. like seven yards deep, and then he just kind of curled yeah. it up and left everybody. Yeah. I didn't know he was it's that not, fast. God damn. Yeah, he's pretty fast. Um, but this game was surprisingly tight, as you yeah. as you said. Uh, the Eagles absolutely could have lost this game, and they were kind of flirting with disaster. A failed fourth and one attempt on their own 37-yard line that led to a Packers touchdown, a fumble deep in Green Bay territory that was scooped up uh, by um, my man, former Bulldog Quay Walker. Not a big deal. Returned <laughs> it all the way uh, to the Eagles' 13-yard line. Uh-huh. That led to a touchdown. So they had some turnover issues that that led to real points uh, that made this um, – it made this a closer ball game than it probably should have been. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, but uh, we could go ahead and uh, hit that kill bill too, uh, coffin for the uh, for the Packers. Yeah, they got to be. You good. know, I think it's interesting because I, I a lot of people kind of immediately said, you know what, maybe this is a good thing. We should see what Jordan Love looks like. But I don't think Aaron Rodgers is down with that. Oh hell no, he's not going to step aside. No, he's he'll, he'll the same back. thing happening that happened to him. He's treating Correct. Jordan Love like Favre treated him, and he probably understands that way more now. When back then he was kind of trying to buy it his time. Mm. And then the Monday night game turned out to be a fun game. Mm. The uh, the Steelers versus the Colts, man. It was. It turned out fun, man. Uh, Saturday, we talked in shit. The, in the second half, it got fun because Matt Ryan started this game oh. with negative, negative seven yards. And a pick in the first quarter, which yeah. allowed the Steelers to basically run up the score 16 to three as yeah. they went into the half. Um, Kenny Pickett didn't throw any touchdowns in this game, but he was clean and efficient 20 for 28, 174 yards. Um, I thought he came out, he looked really good, man. Mm-hmm. I thought so. Mm-hmm. I don't know, just uh, he passed the He's, eye test. He seems to be progressing well. Yeah, they're which doing is it all, right. yeah. Which is what you want to ask if you're a rookie quarterback, for this sure. This is what needs to be happening in Atlanta. Agreed. They need to be, like, kicking the tires on this Ritter guy. But I, I guess when you're one game out of first place, you probably have to kind of go for it. I Mariota. still don't understand. I, I don't, yeah, I, I, you're not going to get any disagreement from me on that take. I, I, I don't understand what they're doing. Um, but, yeah. They they allowed the Colts to get back into this game, but um, when they needed a drive, Kenny P yeah. stepped up and gave them the drive. Eleven plays, seventy five yards, eight nearly six minutes a clock. Yeah, eight. Um, yeah. Benny Snell. Um, yeah, he looked good. The, Benny Snell. I've been seeing Benny Snell for a while. He played for the. I'm pretty sure he played for the Kentucky Wildcats okay. uh, in the SEC. He was good. He's good. Good running back. Uh, yeah. Tomlin decides to go for two, mm-hmm. uh, which turned out to be a good idea. It was a great pass, but an even better catch by my man, former Bulldog <laughs> George Pickens, who was bowling out in this game. He didn't have a lot of catches, but all of the catches he made, I mean, this dude – is yeah. he's a he's an NFL receiver. He was so close to this another circus catch. I I know I know. Oh I know. man, I was I was rooting for him, man, but he he, he dropped it. I was rooting for you. We were all rooting for you. <laughs> but he had a hell of a game. It was nice yeah. to see him. Um, you know, I was I'm always looking out for my Bulldogs. I don't know if I mentioned that they're ranked number one and and they're going into the SEC championship no, game man. this weekend. No, they had no idea. Okay. I don't know if I mentioned that. Wh- hmm. Whatever, you know where to find me on Saturday. Just. <laughs> Just don't call me. Yeah. Uh, Jeff Saturday's clock management. Yeah, yeah. Got a lot of chatter at the end of the game. What the fuck? It was just ro- I just watching the clock roll out, and I was like, even if they got the first down, because it ended up with them failing on fourth down, even if they got the first down, there wouldn't be enough time to like do anything except for like throw like a some just make some shots at the end zone. It was so bad. Was a, Didn't they take three li- three timeouts or one two timeouts? To the, I mean, they, take he, to the clock to the end of the game. They carried. Was it two timeouts they left the game with? I forget. 
it was I bad. don't know, but they, they had three timeouts on yeah. that drive, and, and, and he was hanging on to them like they were good for free milk milkshakes after yeah. the game or something. Like if they, I mean? they, a... Maybe he thought they'd give time out if you have <laughs> If you're out right. of time, you can use a timeout to get more. It's like, <laughs> and it's funny in the post game press conference, he tried to defend the decision, and then 24 hours later, he does another press conference where he basically says, "Yeah, I fucked up." I was like, "Yeah, we knew that already. You were he the should one who hire, figured it out." He should hire a game management uh, uh, consultant, <laughs> like Nathaniel yeah. Hackett did. Yeah, yeah, that, that was bad. I was like, "Oof, well, we got some growing pains here." Indeed. Indeed. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, that's all the games. Uh, you won the week. Let's go. You got 10 points to my eight points. Uh, you also had a you had a, a upset up in there, so that's good, man. But the overall, I'm winning 101 to 97. You got a little closer. And uh, we'll be back later. Don't I have 12 the... points? How you got 12? Steelers was an upset, too. I got that as an upset. And the Browns. I got that as an upset too. Mm-hmm. Man, you called. You tried to get the Falcons upset too. It looks like you missed on some other stuff though, right? Yeah, but I got Cowboys, Vikings, Browns upset, Bengals, Dolphins, Panthers, 49ers, Steelers. That's twelve. I don't know why I counted like that. Hmm. That's why I'm keeping the analog count over here because I don't trust your fucking newfangled wackadoodle computer shit over there. Wait, wait, <laughs> did I did I write something wrong? Did you pick the which ones you said you got right? Cowboys, Vikings, mm-hmm. Browns, Bengals, Dolphins, Browns. Panthers. Wait, 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 Bengals. You didn't pick the Bengals game. No, but you picked the Titans. It doesn't give you. You get a point for that. Is that how it goes? Okay. You get one point. Okay, yeah, I guess. Of all right. I didn't know that. I don't, I don't count it. Mm. All right. Then Bengals. What else you say? Dolphins, Panthers, Dolphins, 49ers, and Steelers. I'm trying to think if I if I marked something wrong. Panthers. Okay, 49ers. Mm. And Steelers. I got mm-hmm. the, I got the spread. She liked that. I don't know. I guess you get whatever. The, so you should be down one point. I don't know if the if the other weeks are so every other week has been right, but this one. I don't know. I am not paying attention. We can maybe, go back and look at it later. Yeah. We don't maybe, have to work this. Maybe out you now. count differently. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, Skip's a sore loser. So uh, no. <laughs> No, I'm just a mathematician, <laughs> unlike Saints fans. <clears throat> Damn, you taking shots at the Saints fans. All right, mm-hmm. uh, time for the superlatives. Uh, mm. I don't have any sound for that, but yeah, time for the superlatives. Uh, I can I can go first if you want. Sure. Real MVP. Uh, this one's a catch twenty two for the fans of this team. Mm. You know you have the wrong coach. You know it's hard for the front office to make that tough decision and fire the head coach on that guaranteed contract. It sucks. But the best team for your team's future, and honestly, uh, honestly, is to lose the game. But NFL players don't tank. And Josh Jacobs might have saved Josh McDaniels' ass with this epic performance. 229 yards on 33 carries. The man was unstoppable. He reminded the league who he was as he ripped through the flailing Seahawks defense. Overtime, no problem. Give him the rock. And let him bust through the first level, run through an arm tackle, then hit another gear and take off like a rocket ship to put this one in the books and leave Derek Carr for some reason in an emotional wreck back at the line of scrimmage. <laughs> Enjoy the feeling, Josh Jacobs, because you the real MVP. What you got? Yeah, Team Josh. Ah, nice. Um, <clears throat> sometimes, I mean, I, I just think. Again, sometimes it's just one answer. The guy has <laughs> exactly. the guy has three hundred and three yards from scrimmage, two touchdowns, yeah. obviously eighty six yard overtime walk off game winner. It's like who who played a bigger part in in winning the game for their team this year, mm. uh this week. Yeah. Um I mean Josh Jacobs with the 
hold my beer moment of the week. It's just like, let's, <laughs> let's get the, let's get the fuck out of here and go, man. Yeah. Uh, he's, he's the real MVP. There's nothing else to say. You're the real MVP. All right. Uh, <clears throat> who's your trash? Um, there was a stat that popped up okay. over the weekend. <laughs> okay. The, the, the Denver Broncos defense <laughs> is the number one red zone defense mm. in the NFL this year. Okay. Uh, however, mm. the Denver Broncos offense, their red zone offense is ranked 32nd. In the NFL. Uh, for those of you who don't know, there are only 32 teams in the NFL. <laughs> so that means they are in last place. Damn. Um, now, I know we're sort of going back to the well of dunking on the Broncos week after week, but man, Russell Wilson, Nathaniel Hackett are hard to ignore as the most embarrassing excuse for an NFL offense I've ever seen. Yeah. Um, and now we're getting these public sideline reports that members of the defense are getting all up in Russell Wilson's face. And we saw that. I, yeah. We saw it. I, you know, he says that it was just like, he's trying to get him pumped up, whatever. But honestly, this is literally the, the worst NFL offense that we've seen in the last 22 years. Right. There mm -hmm. was a tweet that dropped after this game. Who was that guy? Field Yates is his name. Yeah. I like Field Yates. The Bronco, he, this is the quote from his tweet. The Broncos forced 10 points, uh, scored 10 points today, falling to the Panthers 23 to 10. Denver is now to 14.27 points per game this season, the worst <laughs> by any team in, in the NFL since the 2000 Cleveland Browns. Mm. This is some historical, grade A historical fucking trash by an offensive mind too yeah suppose it mm. they're the denver broncos are my russell wilson and nathaniel hackett are my trash this week you are trash well i'm gonna catch you off guard a little bit let's go all right, all right. i'm not gonna lie this one hurts a little bit hmm one of the hottest free agent acquisitions in the offseason was supposed to get a change of scenery and propel his new team that was only oh, a quarterback shit. away <laughs> back to being a contender. I'll admit it. I drank the Kool-Aid, but I didn't know Jim Jones was serving it. And now I got to let it go. Russell Wilson is out here looking like a doggy doo-doo. 19 mm. for 35, 142 yards. Yes, that's seven and a half yards per completion. Is a stat line I would have never expected from Danger Russ. On Sunday, he looked more like Rusty Nail. Or deliver Russ from this horrible nightmare of a situation. His only touchdown pass was in garbage time, with the game all but over, and it looked like all of Derrick Henry's jump passes. Mm. Is this what has come to, Russ? Me to the hospital? <laughs> I hope it gets better next week. But for this week, you are trash. Yeah, so there was no surprise there. Mm. <laughs> same. same. Uh, hurts, though. My mm. shit that got learned. Mm -hmm. This may be one for the gamblers out there. Mm -hmm. The AFC is head and shoulders above the NFC. This yep. week, there were eight interconference matchups. The AFC won six of them. Mm. The only two NFC teams that won uh, were the Vikings, who actually got outplayed by the Patriots, and the Panthers, who played the delegation-worthy Broncos. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, the lowly Browns took down the Bucks. The hapless Chargers beat the Cardinals. Mm. The Jets beat the Brakes off the Bears, and the Raiders hung mm. 40 on the Cinderella Seahawks. Mm. The Lions almost knocked off the Bills, but you get my point. Right. The AFC has the top five quarterbacks, and we might be adding another stud to that group if Pickett keeps trending up. Mm. That bodes well for the AFC with the league going more and more pass happy. The NFC has a lot of ground to make up. Until then, let's put some interconference game parlays together and get rich. Mm. <laughs> 
<laughs> Interesting. That's the shit that got learned. If you bet this week, if you would have bet the NFC, I mean the AFC teams. And mm, the probably I, like I don't that. even know how the spread was either. But you could probably like just that. bet the spreads even if you don't bet the uh the money lines. Mm-hmm. Just throwing it out there, man. Interesting thought. I like that. Um okay, for my shit got learned, I, I don't remember who said it first, but you've probably all heard this idea before that the NFL season doesn't really start until after Thanksgiving. <laughs> um, <clears throat> well, it, it's a time in the season where we not only have a clear idea of who the real contenders are, um, but we also have a pretty good idea of the teams that need to be, as we say down South, taken out to the woodshed. <laughs> now, for me, this week <laughs> was kind of the take them out to the woodshed week. Yeah. Houston Texans. Mm-hmm. Chicago Bears. Yep. Yes, Los sir. Angeles Rams. Amen. And especially the Denver Broncos. Mm-hmm. We're looking at all of you guys. Okay. <laughs> but no single make that a person. Segment, bro. <laughs> yeah. Who got taken out to the woodshed? Yes. Uh, well, I, I'm getting to that because no single person got s- like so thoroughly taken out to the woodshed than Zach Wilson. <laughs> right? His yes. benching appears to have come by way of a team-wide revolt. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was forced to watch the Jets just completely dismantle <laughs> the Bears in street clothes as the inactive QB3 as Mike A. White <laughs> took his motherfucking job and i don't know if he learned it but i sure as hell did this dude is not only got taken out to the woodshed but i'm pretty sure that robert Sala locked his ass in there um and he can go robert Sala can go up to that podium and tell us that the qb situation is a week-to-week thing and zach wilson's career is not over but i'm not buying that shit for a single second I never believed that Zach Wilson mm. uh, was a real quarterback. And if Robert Sala wants to keep his job, uh, he would be wise to keep Zach Wilson locked in that woodshed forever. Oh, shit. Shit got learned. Uh, how, how old is Zach Wilson? Don't they, aren't they older when they come out of BYU? I don't know. He looks oh, like he's 12. He's 23. Okay. A lot of times they come out of BYU, they're like 26. I was going to say, if that's it, then he's done. Hmm. All right, my uh, AFC scariest AFC team. Who you got? Uh, I could go I first mean, if Dol- you want. I I can go. I uh, mean, the Dolphins are the obvious answer again. Mm-hmm. Um, but watching them unravel the Texans didn't really teach me anything new right. about them. Of course, um, but I think I'm going to sort of lean into the honorable mention for the Cincinnati Bengals who are starting to heat up at the right time of year. <laughs> uh, that defense is balling out, but more importantly, the offensive line has strung mm-hmm. together a couple of good, clean games. Uh, Jamar Chase is on his way back to Higgins, who would be a number one receiver on any other team is also balling out. It wouldn't be a number one <laughs> receiver on the Dolphins. He would be a number one receiver on most teams. Let's <laughs> put it you. that way. Order you have an Raiders. embarrassment of riches over there in Miami. <laughs> uh, hey, 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 hold that up now. Hold up now. <laughs> uh, and I assume Joe Mixon will be back soon as well. But P. Ryan, I mean, shit, he, he's balling out too. Joe mm-hmm. Burrow with a clean pocket, the way this dude throws yeah. into contested coverage and the way he throws the ball into the perfect spot where only his – it's either going to be an incompletion – or his guy's going to catch it. When yeah. when you give him a clean pocket and you allow him to throw the ball wherever he wants to, Agreed. you motherfuckers are in trouble. Yeah. Um, so, All yeah. Right. So that's your honorable mention is the Bengals. <laughs> yeah. All right. For mine, I know you're going to check my temperature after this one, but I'm going to say Cincinnati Bengals. Mm-hmm. These boys are rolling. They make the best halftime defensive adjustments can beat you multiple ways, and are winning despite not being healthy. Burrow has that thing about him where he's not flashy, doesn't have the biggest bag of box of tools or anything, but he's got a damn com- – he's, uh, he's a goddamn competitor. You got to respect mm. it, 
and they're getting it together just in time for playoffs with Mixon and Chase coming back healthy any day now. I'd be scared as shit if I had to face this team in the playoffs. So right now Agreed. I gotta go with the Bengals. Mm. My scariest NFC team, no surprise here, the Eagles. Hurts is out there mm. playing the MVP caliber football. Defense and running game are still the calling card of this team, and that's just perfect for a deep playoff get run. Watch out for the Eagles. Sirianni has these boys ready. Who you got for NFC? I got the Eagles, too. They showed me something in this game against the Packers. Um, the Packers are funny because they're one of those teams that doesn't know that they've been taken out to the woodshed. <laughs> <laughs> Right, uh, which in many ways kind of makes them a little dangerous. Yeah, all oh, good. Uh, but the Eagles battled. Uh, they never gave up on the run game. Jalen Hurts can always get you out of trouble. 157 yards, and then Miles Sanders with his 140. Uh, first team to 10 wins. Um, I don't think you want to see this team on your schedule right now. That's true. Uh, you putting some spec on anybody's name this week? Hell yeah. All right, who's putting Hell on? fucking yeah. Who I'm going to go out there with Mr. Kurt. You motherfucking like that, Cousins. <laughs> really? Hell yeah. To come back. You like that? You like that? This dude comes back after a straight up beat down last mm. week, losing mm. to the Cowboys 40 Good to point. 3. Yeah. Right? He rolls up in prime time. Where everyone talks about how Cousins mm-hmm. can't play good football under the nighttime lights. Yeah. And he put one on the Patriots. It was a close game. But there's something about Cousins this year. I'm telling you. So many big time throws. 30 for 37. Three touchdowns. Damn near perfect. The run game wasn't doing a whole lot. So this one was all on Kirk Cousins. Which the media will tell you never ends well. Mm. Okay. But he crushed it. And after the game, in front of that Thanksgiving turkey, when they asked him about, you know, how he celebrates on the plane with his shirt off and the chains around his neck, they asked him, like, what are you going to do to top that? Kirk Cousins said something I never thought I would hear come out of his mouth. He said that he was thinking about calling his dentist to see if his dentist could hook him up with a grill for his teeth. <laughs> Bro, if Kirk Cousins rolls out next week to face Mm. the Jets with a grill in his mouth, I'm going to lose my shit. Mm. It's going to be the greatest moment in NFL (laughs) history. So I'm really hoping he pulls through with that. And I just think everybody needs to put some spec on Kirk Cousins' name, y'all. Put some respect on my name. Uh, T-Law and Associates himself came out slanging that thing on Sunday. For my money, he has the best... Cover two beater ball in football. Nobody should do a cover two against this dude anymore. Once he gets behind that corner, Trevor Lawrence is getting that ball to that guy before the safety gets there. He just drops it in every time before the safety can get over there. It's a thing of beauty. We've been doubting T-Law all through his latest growing pains, but he gave us a glimpse of what we hoped to see when he came out of college. After Sunday's performance, we need to put some respect on my name. For T Law. Nice. Honorable Agreed. mention. Mm? Jacoby Brissett. <laughs> mm, R.I.P. He came uh, he came out, <laughs> hands the ball off or pitches the ball back, and he's like, follow me. Follow yeah. me. And put a safety on his back with an awkward ass looking block. Uh and with that he also said put some spec on his name. But you know, mm. T Law did more. Mm. Yeah, and R.I.P. to <laughs> Jacoby Brissett. Uh-huh. R.I.P. See you yeah. later. Yeah. I'm just wondering, unless uh, unless Deshaun Watson gets really sore after the game, he might mm. be back. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he has a muscle strain. It's like all of a sudden, it's it's like a house on fire. Everyone's trying yeah. to get out. Of the no, <laughs> <laughs> it's the fancy is like no. <laughs> He's bought all the phone numbers to all the massage therapists. <laughs> In the Awful. neighborhood. Oh, all right, let me stop. I shouldn't joke about that. Let's get this over with, though, man. Uh, appreciate everybody checking out. It's a little longer episode, but whatever. What do y'all expect from us, huh? I feel like uh, you say that every week. Yeah. Or well, they could just expect long episodes. A lot of football happening, all right? Spec it. Spec on our names now. <laughs> Spec it. Spec it next time. <laughs> it's been uh, John the Rollins. Skip me, sorry. With this uh, episode of Spin and We'll be back with predictions. Mm. For week 14. Mm. Until Mm. then, y'all take it easy. Peace. Later, y'all.